First question, raise your hand. Chris, we've talked to you a bunch about Malachi, but just through this point, through seven games, what stands out to you about how far he's come, even going back to that very first game this morning? Uh, well, he's just been really uh, been able to really lock in on the game plan a lot more than he has. You know, uh, not having as much a lot of experience as a lot of other guys on the team. I've been really pressing on just how he's been able to lock in on the game plan and, and learn a lot, uh, really fast. And he's also been very consistent. So those are probably two things that pop out the most. Yeah, Chris. Last year, uh, I guess after the game, Kirby's halftime speech got leaked about him, him wanting to break him and all this other. What's that like listening to those Kirby? Is, is it always like? Is it always fire and brimstone? And obviously, you know, been around a lot of motivators. What would you say about the way Kirby delivers the message to the team? Yeah, he's pretty much the same, man. He's very passionate about us and, and the team, and it rubs off on us. And you know. Um, he, he does a great job of getting us pumped up for the games and making sure we stay attentive to detail throughout the games. And uh, that's just the, the kind of guy he is, man. He has a lot of love for this university. He has a lot of love for the team. And uh, I think it rolls off on us pretty well. Chris, what were some of the areas y'all really focused in on improving his defense over the bye week, especially when you look ahead to some of the passing um, attacks y'all got coming up down the stretch? Yeah, just fundamentals and, and, and communication. Uh, fundamentals like playing the ball, um, tackling, um, effort, conditioning, things like that. Um, communication as well, because, you know, uh, like you said, the passing attacks that we got coming is going to take a great amount of communication for us to be able to succeed. So uh, just working on ourselves. I know I sound like a broken record, but we always go to the doctor. So, you know, just continuing to work on our fundamentals and communication is the main key point for us. Nolan Smith, being a South Georgia guy, made a couple of big plays in this game last year. What do you think this game means to him? What does he mean to y'all's defense? Uh, I know, I know it means a lot. Um, he's a guy that's just like Coach Smart for us. You know, just very passionate and brings a lot of energy to the game. You know, he had a great game last year, and I know he's going to do everything it takes this week to be able to have another good game, as long as well as the rest of the defense. Hey Chris, a, a few years ago, Florida had Kyle Pitts in this game. Uh, obviously, in practice every week, you're intimately involved in defending tight ends, mm. Georgia's tight ends in practice. Yeah. What is it about uh, tight ends in particular in recent years that or, uh, Georgia, for sure, has uh, made it such a big part of the offense and makes it such a difficult quandary for defenses? Uh, I personally feel like just in the recent years, tight ends have become some of the best athletes on the field. Just the amount of size and speed they have to go combine with it, and you know the catch radius, and they all they almost pretty much always have great hands and things like that. It makes it makes it difficult for a slower linebacker to defend or a smaller DB to defend. So they they're in that middle ground, but they have a tremendous amount of athleticism that's hard to have hard to deal with. Chris, what's been the impact of not having much? Uh, Jalen Carter this season. Obviously, the last two games haven't had him. You know, how have you guys managed that? Uh, well, we obviously been missing him. You know, he's a great part and a big key to our defense. But you know, we got guys behind him. Uh, a lot of young guys that have been able to step to step up this year and get a lot of experience. And uh, hopefully, we can get Jalen Carter back very soon. Chris, I know you guys preach composure. Kirby preaches that all the time. But mm -hmm. coming up a game like Florida or a bigger game like what may come, is there is there some emotions that you just can't help? Is there some stuff, some excitement, some fire that, does it come up and, or is it easy just to kind of stay in that moment and not get emotional about it? How, how do you handle that? Well, well, me personally, you know, as the years have gone on, I have been able to stay more composed than I have been when I was, you know, a little bit younger. But, you know, it's always going to be those emotions and, and, and things like that flying throughout the game, you know, especially as the game and the stakes get bigger, you know, later in the season, you know, losses take a big toll on the team. So, you know, it's, it's definitely crunch time. And, you know, it's, it, Coach Smart and the rest of the coaching staff and the players as a whole, we just try to help each other out when we see somebody not being composed. You know, uh, Coach Smart always preaches uh, pulling out your composure card, you know, um, sometimes when things ain't going right, he just digging his back pocket and go like this. It's just like an imaginary card, you know, but it's something that we like to use to, you know, stay on track throughout our game. Yeah, yeah Chris, we, I guess we try to put it to bed, but they put out some statement about the game, and no decision about the future of the game. It's like, okay, well, what about for a guy like you that plays Sanford Stadium, goes mm -hmm. to visiting stadiums, if, if the future of this game does turn it into playing in different home stadiums, mm -hmm. would, is that something you think players would like? Would you be open to that, or do you think it should necessarily stay in one stadium all the time? Oh uh, well, I, I definitely like playing in Jacksonville, but I personally would like to see the game be home and home and home as well. Uh, it, it brings a different feel. 
Um, I never had the opportunity to play in uh, uh, Florida Stadium or anything like that, and that's something that I always wanted. So I think it would be great, maybe a home and home, and maybe Jacksonville every now and then or something like that. But you know, uh, regardless, uh, the fans gonna show up and show out. So you know, um, but it definitely would be great to get a home and home every now and then, just because you know I, I feel like the players deserve that experience. You know, their, their players haven't been able to come to our stadium either, and you know they're both great sights to see. As uh, one of the veterans on this team who's been through this game, what are some of your favorite memories of having played Florida the last few years? Uh, just just the game as a whole, just like when you step into the stadium and you see the crowd split 50-50 and, you know, the, the build-up and, you know, it's always a great team, great game between us two. So just just the, just the whole spectacle as a whole, you know, uh, it, it's a great robbery and uh, I, I'm pretty sure the game is going to live up to its, to its past this week. Being from Atlanta, what did you know about this game coming into Georgia and, you know, some of the older DBs uh, mm -hmm. that have already gone and graduated, did they tell you anything about the – you know, this the annual the build up of this game every year? Yeah, uh especially Coach Smart, he's one of the main people, you know, um he's been a part of this this rivalry for a very, very long time. And uh, you know, being from Georgia and being a Georgia fan growing up, I know the importance of this rivalry as well. You know, having been able to be able to play in it as well, you know, it just it just adds a little bit more. And you know, our team knows that and, and, and Florida knows it as well. Chris, obviously you were on the field the last time Florida won in this series a few couple few years ago. Mm -hmm. And last year, total yards, they actually had more than you. Mm -hmm. right? You guys are huge favorites, but just in terms of the, the team's awareness of what, what could happen in this game, despite you guys being a three-touchdown favorite, can mm -hmm. you speak to that? Well, like I said, man, we know the kind of game it's going to be whenever we play Florida. You know, it's a very big rivalry. And uh, we, we can't go in this game dwelling on our past. You know, we have to focus on the game plan this week and be able to execute. You know, um, like you said, I was on the field when we lost to them two years ago. Um, last year, it was a tough game, it, uh, although the score, the score probably didn't reflect that. But, you know, it was always a tough game whenever we were able to play those guys. And, you know, we're going to have to be prepared. Chris, what stands out to you about Anthony Richardson and getting ready to play him this week? Uh, well, he, first of all, he's a physical specimen. Um, he breaks a lot of a lot of tackles. Um, he's able to make a lot of plays outside the pocket as well as standing in the pocket and getting deep shots down the field. So, uh, you know, uh, we're gonna have to put put together a good game plan to be able to contain him as well. You know, um, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, go and get some last year and see what he was about, and he he's done nothing but improve since then. Things have obviously gotten strange with the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. What's your relationship with uh, Brenton Cox now, if anything, and, and mm -hmm. Jalen Kimber being down? Uh, well, uh, I got a great relationship with uh, Jay Bug. You know, he was he was with us uh, last year, and uh, Brandon Cox as well. Um, you know, uh, things happen. You know, guys aren't 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 on the team like they used to be. But you know, you keep that great relationship if if you had a good relationship with those players as well. So you know, um, I talk to Jalen Kimber a lot. Um, talk to Brandon Cox every now and then. And, you know, um, no love lost. But um, when, when we step in between those lines, ready to go to work. It's a business trip. Other questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Have a good day. Thank you. Oh, we're going to get to a week.